Morning everybody, day two of the fire safety event at the NEC. It's Tuesday the 6th of April. I'm here at the entrance as people are coming in. Uh, we're not quite open yet, but we will be. Um, just a reminder, if uh, you watched our post from yesterday, there's still plenty more activity going on in the ASFP Passive Fire Theatre, just by the ASFP stand in Hall 3A. So please come along and see us. And don't forget, of course, the show is gonna run until Thursday the 7th. Uh, so we're currently on day two, that's the middle of the show, plenty to come and we'll be also talking to more of our members as well. I'm here with Bob from the Institute of Fire Safety Managers, that's the IFSM, so a fellow trade association. Um, Bob, tell us what's important uh, for the IFSM at the moment. So what are the current important issues for, for you and your members and, and, and key stakeholders? Yeah, I mean, the main issues at the moment, of course, are the new changes in legislation. Our membership goes uh, right through from career firefighters right through to fire engineers, but the main bulk is fire risk assessors. And, of course, there's major changes in fire risk assessments coming through with the external wall systems on 9980, BS 9980, and also... Uh, uh, changes with the Fire Safety Act and its regulations, which brings all that uh, into fire risk assessments now. So we're trying to focus on that at the moment for our members. We're running a few workshops uh, as well on external wall systems, that kind of thing. But really the main, the main focus is uh, on post Grenfell, yeah. looking at where we stand and really getting recognition industry-wise for fire risk assessors. So we're here with aid from FSI, ASFP member. So they've been here for the best part of two days now at the fire safety event. And also aid uh, did a presentation in the Passive Fire Theatre for the ASFP yesterday, uh, which of course we've recorded and will make available at a later date. Aid, hello, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. So what has been the main conversation on the FSI stand over the last couple of days? Uh, well, passive fire protection for me, um, how to do, I think one of the things that has really come across is a shift in doing the job properly because everything is seen. So you take, your client wants a report at the end, before photographs, after photographs, during photographs, because some of our products have got a two-step process and that report goes to the client who can flick through these pictures or on a PDF on the computer. So no longer can you do a substandard fire stop in the loft because it's hidden and out of the way. Everything is seen and that's a critical thing. And I'm having conversations like that about neatness, perfection, and people are responding really well to it and saying, we want you to come and talk to our lads and lasses about that. I'm here with Gavin from Checkmate Fire, ASFP member. We're on day two of the fire safety event in Birmingham. How's it been going, Gavin? Uh, really busy, yeah. Um, yesterday, we didn't stop really, I don't think, from uh, nine o'clock to about three, quieting down a little bit, and then it was really encouraging this morning, piles of people coming in, so yeah, quite good so far. It does seem busier today than yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> middle day normally, uh, exhibition seems to be, but yeah, good inquiries, good good uh, level of people coming to us and engagement, so really enjoyed it so far. So I'm here with my friend Ian Doncaster from the Smoke Control Association, who are our distant cousins of the ASFP. Uh, we recently did a podcast, uh, for those of you who saw it, with Simon Plummer on uh, the uh, Smoke Control Association's new guidance document on uh, fans, smoke fans and ventilation. Uh, Ian, hello. Hello. So, how's the show been going for you so far? Um, yeah, it's been uh, quite busy, people coming past. Um, so, so, yes, it's uh, a, a good event that draws lots of people in. What are you hoping to get from the show? We're, we're at the beginning of day two. What, what's, your, what, what's your sort of key, key strategy for the IFSM uh, at the fire safety event? Well, we're here really on uh, as really a show face, really, uh, of uh, the Institute. And we, we always seem to be, every year, we always seem to be mobbed by uh, members and non-members who are coming to us saying, well, what do you do? What do you give? What can we give? And we're, we're an organization, professional body, um, and we and the chairman are, are volunteers, but we're here to give back to the members. The members aren't here for us, we're here for the members. And this is a showcase for us, for members to come and have a chat, have a talk, share their problems. It'd be like we're talking now, you know, uh, give a bit of advice, 
how they can up their membership, how they can up their grades, how they can get onto a register, what they have to do. So it's a bit of an educational thing for members, but it's also meet and greet, see these people and uh, say hello. My friend Glenn from Quellfire, ASFP members. Glenn, has it been going? We're now uh, about halfway through day two, so for the last day and a half, uh, has it been going? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's been good, busy. We've had some good conversations with existing customers and, and new prospects as well. And what do you think the major sort of talking point on the stand has been from a, from an industry point of view? Yeah, so we've had a lot of conversations with regards to um, early engagement, making sure that um, everyone involved in the construction process is aware of the importance of fire safety um, and, and, you know, making, when it comes down to it, making the fire stopping, um, making sure it's done right and everyone is aware of the importance so it can be can be completed correctly. So what, when people come to your very professional stand, uh, what have you got new to talk about? Um, we're, we're talking about a lot at the moment. I think um, a lot of inquiries have been focused around uh, the quality and surety of budget. Um, we've talked uh, a lot around fire door surveys, what comes out of fire door surveys, the various quality of fire door surveys that people are getting at the moment, and then the ability for clients to make a decision at the end. And the swings around around about kind of a, a, a fixed price budget um, to resolve all the issues and remediate doors and replace doors rather than a variable budget that can, can lead them down a, the wrong path. So I think uh, clients are trying to get the building's resolved from a fire safety point of view, but understand what those real costs are. And I think we're getting a lot of inquiries in at the moment where, where people unfortunately have gone down paths where they've not been able to get that surety of costs. So what we're trying to do is, is help them with fixed priced work across entire buildings to get them compliant at the right level of budget without variations. What, what do you think the major issues are for, for the Smoke Control Association that you're looking at this year? Uh, I think there are a number of topics. Um, Trouble 9-1 and, and what is going to come out of that is, is going to be a big issue, I think. But in terms of trends, the question about uh, pressurisation systems and depressurisation systems, I think certainly there's lots more pressurisation systems around now. They've fallen out of favour. The fact that this, there was a significant consideration understanding that really the likes of manufacturers or specialist subcontractors were not engaged enough, uh, early enough. Um, is that still something you're having conversations about? Early engagement would be amazing because even from a, the point of view of just getting the services to go through the same aperture, so make a nice aperture sort of like that size, all going through one side, instead of like five different locations above the, near, near the head of the wall. So having an early engagement, so getting the um, electricians and the, the M&E people to have sort of conversations with us, air conditioning, um, even the dampers, have conversations with us let us try and help them in advance not not at the end of the job when it's at its most difficult and that's the frustration We've had a lot of conversations with regards to um, early engagement, making sure that um, everyone involved in the construction process is aware of the importance of fire safety, um, and and you know making when it comes down to it, making the fire stopping, um, making sure it's done right, and everyone is aware of the importance, so it can be can be completed correctly. Um, what you've got on the stand is there anything uh, anything new you want to talk about? Any new developments? Um, we're really looking at. Uh, I think the, time, the real time-saving uh, product is our, our Peno patch, which is a small uh, patch, which I'm going to get one. Oh, lovely. I like this. A bit of impromptu uh, demonstration work going on here. Here we go. And uh, basically, uh, just like Blue Peter, stick your back plastic, you peel it off, five mil overlap, and I'll give you one hour fire resistance. Um, one of the more debated issues recently is that of the integrity of smoke shafts and their construction. Uh, what's the Smoke Control Association's views on that? Uh, well, as an association, we've got a, a lot of members, and so typically we have a, a, a body of, of different views. But fundamentally, the function of a smoke shaft um, is to um, exit the uh, hot smoke and the products of combustion from a, from a building safely. So the requirement is that it is non-combustible. Um, when you start getting into classifications of, of that, it, um, th then, then we start to get into more detail, um, whether it's a builder's work construction or whether it's um, a duct, and whether it's possible to 
um, CE market, and so uh, that that is where the the issues start to come. But generally, members are using um, builders' work construction, and so the issues are not so great. Reese, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. You haven't been on not last on the couple of days, have not, you? Not, no, not, not on the camera recently. I've been in the office, but I'm here for today. Loving it here. And you've been doing some work today. We've done it. We've done a bit of work. You mean office work or, or well, trade show work? Just work work. You <laughs> I've know, been so working. Generally, what we pay you yes, for. Yes, I think I've been working uh, hard. <laughs> check check out our Instagram. There's a bunch of behind the scenes. That's is it that's here? All me. Huh? Can I do that? No. no. <laughs> yeah, maybe it could be here. We'll put it there. <laughs> so, in the passive fire theatre today, we had Hannah Mansell talking about fire doors. We did. Uh, we had David Keeble talking about fire curtains. Um, we had Stephen Bond talking about fire rated glazing, and we had Andrew Cooper from Global HSE, and he was talking about um, quite a new subject, which is this fire stopping around these UPVC uh, sprinkler pipes. Which, right. and there is a technical word for that, which is probably way beyond my pay scale, I see. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure our members or anybody who's engaged with uh, PVC no, no, no. pipes will probably have a far better idea than I do. Yeah. Um, so they were all today, really yeah. good engagement. Some great uh, speaks. And if you missed them, if you weren't here today, we will be posting about them over the next couple of weeks. So we are. We, we're recording each of the presentations over the three days. So we did today, yesterday, and we will and do tomorrow. tomorrow. So yeah. talking about tomorrow, what's yeah, so, coming up? So tomorrow we have, let me just check here so I don't get it wrong. We've got Mo Elmsbury. Uh, he's talking about early planning and electronic work logging. So if you're interested in that, come have a look at that will be at 10.30 to 11.15. And then we've got Joe Celia talking about fire stopping service penetrations at, um, that'll be 11.30. So do have a look, uh, come over and have a look at those. And then after that, it's uh, our very own, we've got Andrew Taylor, Phil Brownhill and Tony. Yep. Uh, Tony Kukaran, I always get his last name wrong. Uh, Very no. sorry, Tony. Um, they'll be talking from 1.30 to 3.15 about membership training and, and all of the good stuff technical. Uh, so yeah, do have a look, come and join us. Um, it's just, just around the corner, so come find us and then you'll be able to find them. You can't, you can't miss both. Can't miss I, think, I think the ASFP stand is, for the fire safety event, is the biggest one we've had, uh, and thanks to them. Uh, Tristan, thank you, Tristan. Um, and obviously the, the, the theatre is, uh, is, you can't miss that either, because there's a great big sign above it that says Passive Fire Theatre. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do, do stop by. And of course, we've interviewed some more members uh, today. We've got a few more members to talk to tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we've also interviewed the Institute of Fire Safety Managers and the Smoke Control Association, so fellow trade associations, yeah. but important all the same, I think. I mean, they're, they're not specifically passive fire, so we're happy to rub up alongside them and, and talk about some Understood. of the things that are important. And obviously, to them. there'll be members that, that cross over, so there's a lot of crossover, so it's definitely good to build those connections. Absolutely. So, we're pretty much near the end of today, it's quieting down a bit. So, it's down. so very hectic there in the middle. It was. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have the same tomorrow. Big busy day. And, and our own Steve Davis, our own CEO, did a presentation as well. So, I did. which I missed. We didn't, we didn't film that, so we can't show anyone that. But I don't think it was there. It was great. I don't think we we're allowed to film. Oh, maybe not. No. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so we'll all see you all tomorrow uh, at the fire safety event for the last day, which is Thursday. If you're thinking of coming along, uh, come along tomorrow and come and see us and say hello. Talk about membership. Talk about training. Talk about anything to do with pacifier. It's the ASFP. And again, if you only have like an hour or two, try and get there between 10 and 12, because that's when the speakers are on, you yeah. want to see those. Do we need to do any of this? Uh, well, All the links will be, somewhere if there are any links, they'll be down below. There we go. <laughs> see you later. See you tomorrow.